Okay, so now that we know the basics of PHP, we can start to work with using this knowledge about PHP to interact with our MySQL database and get information from it. Now before we do that, we're going to actually need to put some information in our MySQL database. So if we go to Firefox, go to your posts table in PHP My Admin and click on insert. Now PHP My Admin has a very good uh, user interface for adding stuff to a table. This tutorial, I'm not going to focus on building your own user interface to help you add stuff. I'm just going to have you do it through PHP My Admin. You can do that on your own, um, and I might do a tutorial later, but for now we're just going to do it right like this. So, so we have a title for the uh, piece of news, the content of the news itself. Now for the date, we can use this calendar over here, however I prefer to use this now function so that when we hit uh, go, it will automatically get the time there and it will give us all the information we need for that date time field. And for user, we can just hit one for now. Uh, we'll talk more about users and setting up the user table in a later video. So let's save this. And now if we click on browse, you can see that we have a date in there. Now the date isn't formatted too nicely, so we're going to want to change that around a bit later, and I'll show you how to. But now let's go back to our PHP and show you how to get to the MySQL database from a PHP file. Since you can have several databases running on one server, you have to first connect to MySQL in general, then select your database, and then you can get information from a table in that database. So for starters, let's do MySQL underscore connect, and that does exactly what it sounds like. It connects to the MySQL server. If you're testing this on your own computer, it will be localhost and a username and password that you uh, came up with. Um, if you're on a web server, though, it will probably be different than localhost. So just uh, keep in mind that you may need to change that. Um, now, you can just leave it at this. This will be a perfectly valid connection. However, if this does not connect, nothing will happen except we'll get a bunch of errors when we try to connect to our database. I mean, when we try to get stuff out of our database. So instead of doing that, we can just, at the end of this, instead of typing a semicolon, we type or die MySQL error. Now, die is a function that basically stops anything after this point. The page won't be rendered anymore. It will just stop and give us that error, and it'll tell us something's wrong. Now, if I load the page right now, nothing should happen because I've typed that correctly. Let's do one more thing, and that's called MySQL underscore select underscore DB. Now we'll select the database that we want. I believe it's PHP underscore tutorial 1. And I'm going to do the same thing, or die, MySQL error. Now let's just say I entered something else in for the MySQL connect function. Let's, now if we load this page, see that is our MySQL error that it cannot connect. However, if I type the right thing and load that, no errors. And nothing happens because we haven't told it to do anything. So now if we go back to PHP My Admin and if we clicked on browse, Take a look at this SQL query. Select asterisk from post limit 0, 30. Now, I'm not going to talk about limits just yet, but the first two lines are important. Select asterisk from post. The asterisk means all, and that means select the entire row. We can select specific things in a row, like we can select just the ID, just the title, just the date, something like that. But we want to get everything for our news thing. And from post just tells us what table we want. Now this uh, SQL query thing, this can help you when you're first starting out building queries in PHP. So let's go back to our document. We're going to use, to set a new variable. We're going to call it query equals MySQL query. And this is another built-in PHP function that will let you get information from a database once you've connected to the database. So we're going to do, not insert, select all from posts. Be sure to put a semicolon at the end. Close your quote, close your parentheses, and another semicolon. Now, but at the end, our queries should be much more complex than that, but this is simple enough for now. Now I'm going to show you a new line of code that it might be a bit difficult to understand at first, but I'll explain it 
hopefully, so you should be able to get it. Okay, this is probably the most important MySQL related function you'll use. While basically means continue executing this until we're out of rows. So while we can set a variable called row equal to a row from the query, then I want to use that information. Now MySQL fetch array takes that query and it sets it into an array as I showed you in the last video so you should know how to work with arrays um, so just as an example hopefully so you can understand this we, we can do print r row now we only have one row right now so that will only print it once but once we get more news pieces we'll get this printed twice so let's load this and again we get an array if you do a view source it looks more readable and notice it gives us two gives us the array in both the type the text type of the column as well as a number. I'd recommend using the text version of the array but it's up to you. Okay so instead of doing that however since we can't just have that out on our page we're going to get specific information from it. So let's echo for starters div style equals I'm gonna do most of my stuff in single quotes because I don't like using backslashes but uh, that that's just a stylistic thing you may be fine using backslashes and not like single quotes. That's up to you. I'm going to do that and then after it and end div. And between those two I'm going to echo row title. So remember the row is in array. If we look at that row title should give us new news. So if we load that and we get that new news. I'm just going to enter echo a line break there. A actual line break not a HTML line break now let's enter the actual description of the of the news piece let's just echo row is it post I, I don't remember if you enter something that doesn't exist it won't give you an error it'll just not show up but that was the right thing so let's go with that and I'm going to once again put a line break but this time also an HTML line break because I didn't wrap this in a div so this shouldn't change anything. Now, well, like I said, if you go back to our database and you look at the date, that's not very readable. I mean, you can read it, you can tell it's August 25th and what time it was, but it's not as pleasing to the eye. So I'm going to show you one of the most useful functions in PHP, it's called date. And you can just search it on Google, PHP date. That's the first one that comes up, it'll come from the PHP manual. And this returns a string formatted according to the given format st string using the given integer timestamp or the current time if no timestamp is given. In other words, timestamp is optional and defaults to the value of time. That did not explain it very well, I realize that. However, let's take an example. They give you some down at the bottom, which are right here. So if we use date as a function, we've, and now look at this, it uses this combination of letters and that produces something like March 10th, 2001, 5, 16 p.m. Now, the nice thing about having this manual is all the letters are explained up above, everything that they do, and you have pretty much the whole alphabet to choose from. You can try entering random letters, I don't recommend it, but I recommend reading up this page, see what you can do with the date. I'm just going to copy this one now, back to our PHP file, I'm going to echo that. However, there's a slight problem with just doing that. If we load it now, that's what time it is now. I want the time that it was when I entered that. So what we want to do is first, we're going to assign a variable called row underscore date, and that will be the row date. And so that will give us the exact piece of information that was in our MySQL database right there. However, PHP still can't use that in its date function directly, so we're going to wrap that in a function called str2time. And that basically can convert anything, anything that looks remotely time-related, like the thing we have in our database, to a timestamp that PHP can use. And then we can put that in as the second parameter to our date function, after a comma, after the first um, section. So if, now if we pass that in, instead of getting the date that it is now we get the date that it was when I posted that 
And now just to make it a little more readable, I'm going to put posted at. And if we load that up, you get something like that. Now in future video, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to make a user registration system and hopefully talk about how to get the username who posted this onto the front page here. And hopefully you can play around with this and make it look good to your own tastes.